This week's video features pants with Mario of Minetti tailoring. And I also wanted to shout out that who donated this suit to the podcast, which you'll see more footage of later on in the video. Sunny is a small woman owned business right on Monroe Street. And I happened to pop in there at the time of our color making retreat. And if you see this fabric, you can see how it just to me seemed so fun. It was like a, a bright blue with a little bit of burgundy in there. And the question I had for Mario was, can I wear a suit with these cigarette shaped pants? And you'll find out as you watch what he does to make the suit and the pants fit better. But I just wanted to thank Sunny for donating the suit. And if you don't follow them, you ought to follow them on Instagram. Certainly when you come to Madison, it can be part of your rotation. Sunny, Twigs, Good Day Shop, Leopold's, Madison Chocolate Company, all of our favorite hangouts. Okay, thanks for watching today. Hi. Well, hello. <laughs> welcome back and welcome back to Jackson Rose. To start when I want to say thank you everybody for um, mm. the last viewers. Well, thank you so much. I can appreciate it. Do you want to tell us about how you came into tailoring? We have was, uh, too many stories to talk about it. How, <laughs> how we started. About that's true. That's true. So the story, the beginning to start sewing actually um, started in Minneapolis. Before, uh, I want to do some uh, shirt for myself. So somebody give me a shirt if it was very well fit. Oh. I love that. Ooh, yes. And you know, if you like clothing, when yeah. you find something you like it, you just don't want to let it go. So I look for similar shirts. I couldn't find it. You know, try to find something where it fit you well, stuff like that. It was not like now. I went from places to places to ask if somebody can do a shirt for me. I met this lady and she did pants hem for me. She told me that she knows somebody who's a designer. I went and talked to this gentleman. He said, yes, I can do a shirt for you. I remember it was $70 a thousand. I said, okay, I'm gonna do one shirt. We pick up the fabric and I'm gonna see how that works. So he made it one for me. Oh, I love it. Mm. It was perfect. Mm -hmm. That was good. And the and experience, like how did that change your sense of self when you wore that shirt? So I will say I feel that was me. Mm. So I did not dress up well, not because I don't want to. Mm -hmm. It was no resources for me to find something that fit me well. So I sent him to do two more shirts. Yes. And when I went to pick it up, he not even started yet. So I said, can I wait? He said, yeah, sure. And I hear a conversation. Mm -hmm. He's teaching classes. I was thinking in my head. I said, my mom was a seamstress, but she never took classes. If I took classes, I may become good at it. I was, it was a conversation with myself. So I talked to the guy and said, hey, if I took classes, if I'm good at it, would you hire me? He says, why should I hire you? And he said, no. And, uh, and I told him, why not? Yeah, I and love he that. Says, how can I hire you? I don't know. I don't know anything about you. I said, you did not hear the question. I said, if I'm mm -hmm. good, would you hire me? Mm -hmm. Start laughing. He said, I said, only if you're good at it. I remember this. I took my first class. I never forget that one. So I was sewing the sleeve on the armhole. But when you sew the sleeves in the armhole, you do three cuts here, uh -huh. one in the top, and one in the back. But I was so nervous, I just cut like this. <laughs> so after I cut that like that, I show him he was kind of mad, but I had to go because I got to go to work. I told my boss I don't work and say I have to go. Uh, can I go early because I, I'm taking classes? I need to buy some fabric. So they allow me to do that. So I went to Walmart. I buy a piece of cotton and I work all night long and I finish a shirt. And the next day I said, check it out. This is the one I screw up and make a mistake. And that's the one I fix it myself. Mm. And he take a look at it and and compare the work and he said, you did by yourself. And I said, yes, I did. And he said, you really want to learn. He said, mm. these ladies here are paying money for one year. They cannot do what you did by yourself in one single night. Oh, he that. said, you have the skills or mm -hmm. you have the desire to learn. Mm -hmm. I said, I told you, I said, I can learn. Oh. So two months later, he hired me. That's such a great story. Oh my gosh, yes, thank yes, you for yeah. sharing thank that. You. Judging by the response we got through our videos, People are hungry to hear about this, both 
not just your desire, your desire to learn is evident, but your mastery is evident as well. And I think we could off easily go through our modern living without encountering a master about around clothing. So much of clothing is now mm -hmm. mass produced. Fortunately, we have a knitting audience. Some of, some of my audience comes from knitting. And so we're very keen to make things fit us well. And yet we didn't get instruction like you had. So the thing that I took away from the videos that I'm so grateful for is that's transformed my making is the way you have this giant mirror, which no one can see, and you see a silhouette from head to toe. And your so your eye is so well trained. And that, I mean, obviously comes through experience. You, But then this story that you just told, you also have a drive, a willingness to learn, and experience. So for everybody is this, OK? So we have teachers, OK? We have teachers or we have students. Um, what I tell people is we have to be careful what I teach. And we try, when we want to learn something, we have to be careful what we learn. Because I might be teaching something wrong, mm. how things would fit well, how to investigate too. To I be went skeptical. Yes, because I went from jobs to jobs to trying to get these sewing skills. In one job, I was told by my manager, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter what. Mm -hmm. When you do alterations, you have to tell the customers, you look great, you look good. Oh. Even if that's not good. Oh. But that one, I never learned that. Mm -hmm. I always keep in my head, if the garment is not going to look good on you, mm -hmm. I will not tell you. Mm -hmm. You should alter. I will do opposite. I said, I said, this is not going to work on you. This is your money. This is your garment. i rather you have this, this, and that so I can make it work for you. Sometimes we choose what to learn or how oh, to approach the yes. work. Yes, I love that. Yeah. I love that. Mm -hmm. Well, here's what I've observed and what I wanted to talk about today mm -hmm. is I've observed that in retail and even in knitting, there's a lot of focus on our tops. And there is, and there's some talk of denim and denim trends and styles and silhouettes, etc. But I, I personally think when I go out and my whole head to toe outfit feels good, it is because the pants speak to the top and the pants speak to the shoes and all of it is having one cohesive conversation. Mm -hmm. Yet I don't feel like there's a lot of people that talk about pants silhouettes and how pants ought to fit. And there's some general rules, but this is what I wanted to go into some detail with you about today. And so I brought some pants to try on and just to hear your insights about pants and fitting and altering Oh, them. definitely, and that would be great. And I, I agree with you 100%. Sometimes we concentrate at the top only, um, especially now with people, they like to do the selfies, you know what I mean? Yeah. Just, so you just concentrate at just the top only and uh, we don't concentrate the whole body. Um, so I have the opportunity myself like uh, to do alterations. Yes. I have to eyeball 100%. Like I said, I have a big mirror. Here. I cannot work without a mirror. For me, looking in a mirror is like I'm looking at a picture and I can see every single detail of the person. But it gave me the ability to to help the customer choose because the difference I will consider myself when you come to buy a clothing from me or to alter a clothing from me instead of different places is I just don't try to just grab the money. I just make sure I do a unique work that I would keep the customer. So for that one, I have to work myself very hard to to find the right fit for that the the person to choose the right garment as well. I make returns so many times to people. They bring me suits or dress or this, this one don't work. Or some people, they just stop by and say, Mario, can you do my favor? I just want your opinion. Mm. I don't know if I return this garment or I should keep it. Oh, I love that. So <laughs> like I was just telling you before, I said 95% of, of my customers, they love my style. And 5% of uh, my style probably is not going to fit well because I'm very straightforward. Say this is going to work and this is not going to work. A lot of people, they love that because they don't mm -hmm. want to waste the money. Well, I also think that you become, you when you start to have someone who, telling you, wanting to educate you and not just sell you things. Yes. You know, then you feel empowered in the transaction, in the experience. 
And mm -hmm. so it becomes more than money changing hands. It becomes um, I can take like my fitting with you and I can take it into my making choices as I knit sweaters or as I buy new clothes, yeah. etc. Exactly. So you're building and through these videos, even though you can't all be with Mario in person, which is wonderful, you can start to build some insights into your own, you know. Yes. Know. And uh, but I know some people that are not going to be in this state. It's going to be in different state. But I have customers, they go to different states and they call me and say, Mario, can I have a consultation with you? I do mm -hmm. free consultations. So I say, can we do like a one day to do a FaceTime and give me some opinions? Oh, I'll be happy to. Mm -hmm. And the audience, if they are hearing this, is that's what I told them. You guys are welcome to give me a call, have your opinions. I say, this one mm -hmm. is going to work, this one is not going to work. Or you, what you should be looking for. I'll be happy to. Okay, well, you be careful because there might be a, a tsunami of calls. <laughs> um, no, that's okay. That's totally okay. fine. Yeah. You know, last time we focused on the jacket and I wanted to bring, I, I think I'm going to start with my comfort silhouette and a suit that you already shortened the pants on mm -hmm. and i just want you to talk about the fit on my body and the caveat is my body isn't your body i don't have it's just a body mm -hmm. and i it, i'm not using myself as a model for anything other than we need somebody to put the glove on. yes uh, yes and um before i work with you too mm -hmm. like i when we we'll talk about with those pants I want everybody to know is feel comfortable with with yourself. Be comfortable with a person who is doing the feeding. Person who's doing the feeding, myself, I'm concentrated. Like pretending that designer is working in a mannequin. He's looking every single angle. That's what I've tried to work with a person too as well. Now trying to work in, in every single angle to make sure everything is correct, make sure everything is right. Because I have this thing in my head that I always say, doesn't matter if I pay $10,000 or $100,000 in advertising per year. It matters to me how good you look when you step outside of my store and you get out so beautiful that everybody's going to ask who fixed that, who altered this for you, what I'm looking for. For me, is my goal is when you step out to, yes. make it to look great. Well, and I can speak to the fact that the jacket that you did on our last mm -hmm. video, I love wearing it. And I feel like Thank I you. have like, you know, a superhero's cape on or something because I know <laughs> it was just for me, you know. And just feeling empowered. Yeah, like really. It. Yeah. We, and then the funny thing is, is the suit after that, I, I think just to preview some of what we're go going to do is the suit um, that isn't the silhouette that I normally go to, but because I know Mario, I, I saw a few things happen when I tried it on that I can't wait to show you and talk with you sure. about. And then yeah. I had some like good and bad pants. Just, you know, like better. I don't know. We'll just see what you think. We'll, we'll, we'll see it. We'll, mm -hmm. we'll take a look at it. And let's similar like we did the jackets. Yeah. We're going to talk about it. I want to see why and why we choose this one. Why not this one? Yes. And which one works better. On yes. Me. I not to derail us, but I did start watching a lot of tailoring content on YouTube and one of I couldn't help myself and like bespoke made for you garments is a different thing. And some people were, you know, leaving questions about their specific body shape. And it was very interesting to me because I recognized that some body shapes really lend themselves to having the suit built around them rather than just altering the suit. My body for better or for worse is a little bit quote unquote easier for off the rack, I think. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean it's better. And mm. it doesn't mean that anybody can't look good in a pair of pants and a suit. Anybody can. I 100% agree with you. And I think that is why so many uh, factories or companies, they start doing those business made to measure, made to order, bespoke suits, stuff like that. So I don't know if I share with you this conversation, but uh, somebody who was my boss at March of Fields years ago. Mm, I I'm going to give that name. His name is Guillermo Vargas. I look up to him because he was my teacher. We were having a conversation. He says, it's a bespoke suit doing suits here, but it doesn't look so great. And I told him, this, do you know why? His response was, do you know why? Mm. <laughs> I said, yes, I do. It's because they have a pre-cut mm. body. 
medium, small, large, and a 42, 48 mm -hmm. classic European cut. So this game, this guy is 42, probably and 166 pounds, something like that. So that's going to be a slim cut. So you cut, take this pattern and recut. So that one, just when he put it on, you put pins to fix it. It's not that custom made. Custom made was like the gentleman two classes and make the shirt for me. Who he right there, he draw right there himself and cut it and plus a custom made. That was a real master on custom made clothes. Yes. Not because somebody say I do custom made. That's the man is making custom made. How I know all that kind of stuff is because I work with brides, I work with suits, and they say there's been custom made and, and all this information, all those but how come you need mm, so much alteration so much and what people don't know is alterations is more time involved when somebody make a clothing for you it's a lot more why do i need to pay so much money in alterations when making this one costs only this much money mm -hmm. there's like a lot more time mm -hmm. so that to say this is our third video and mm -hmm. we have so much we want to talk about over you know but yeah. this video we're going to talk about pants mostly and maybe a little bit about where pants meet shoes and where shirts meet pants sure those Sounds intersections yeah, okay perfect. great well i'll change so and... you go ahead and change yes. i'm gonna wait for you here. okay great all right thank thanks. you okay so this is a pair of pants that oh let me scoot way back that you've already shortened for me yeah and i th believe i wore these shoes but will you just Go over the basic silhouette of these. I I know what it is, but why don't you tell them the basic silhouette of this trouser? You know, is so my, myself as a um, a tailor or master in alterations. Mm -hmm. What I concentrate the most is I can see the body type, body shape with those pants or jacket. How to fix it? How to alter? So sometimes of people say I like to wear high rise pants mm -hmm. i like to wear low rise pants mm -hmm. now i need to understand to see it if your body allows you to wear sure. a high waist pants or a lower waist pants right. lower rise i'm sorry lower rise right. pants. so i'm gonna speak with words and i don't want to offend anybody okay so if you have a prominent seat I have one. A prominent seat with a lower rise pants. Yeah. It's becoming way too low here. Mm -hmm. This is going to come too low. Mm -hmm. So if you sit pretty much, oh, you almost see everything sure. from behind. Sure. Uh -huh. So like I say, it's, those pants is not for everybody. Right. When you make clothing, but you like it, the feeling to have low rise. Yeah. You low rise the front and you high rise the back. Sure. So it's enough fabric to come and cover the seat and lower the front. Yes. You can do this work. Yes. I can do that. Like I have done alterations, keeping the, the back high. Mm -hmm. We can stay like facing the wall. Mm -hmm. I keep the, the back high mm -hmm. and from here I lower the front lower. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't come all the way up, but it's coming down here. Ah, that's good. I never so, even heard of that alteration. Yeah, so I can do those. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, mm -hmm. I can do those pants like that. Mm -hmm. It's possible. Yeah, and I, I, don't, I don't know enough about I do have people come in and want lower rise jeans and things like yeah. that. And, and and I will tell you why okay. high rise and low rise. Okay. Or why I take in this one. Okay. It's because it has nothing to do from top. Mm -hmm. It has to be down from the bottom from here. Mm -hmm. So when this one, those pants hang down here too oh, much, it bothers sure. you when you take the stairs. Sure. That's when I recut this part right here, take right. the waistband out right. and recut this and your pants come high. Right. Can I tell you something, my basic feeling about trousers? I don't sure, know why, I call this the carriage. Uh, sure. And I feel like a fitted carriage, for me, feels me and looser legs. Is that a proper terminology or not? I don't even know if this is called the carriage, but, but my waist to hip goes out, so I feel like that fitted is like flattering. So. I want people to hear this. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. well, you have a microphone on. All right. Perfect. So, yep. So, um, I don't have a fancy words to call that. Sure. 
in what I want people to hear me out and very careful. Mm -hmm. Those fancy words is used only to make sales. Okay. My work is to work with a person himself and look at it in the mirror mm -hmm. and I'm gonna show options where you look much better. Ah, uh-huh. Thus, all those uh, fancy words I can't even memorize myself. Sure. I remember very clear when I started working this one. Those was only to be catchy. Marketing. Yeah, yeah. Ca catchy phrases. Sure. Catchy phrases they, when sure. the customer say, wow. That, sure. That was all. Sure. So I'm saying we have to be careful with that. Sure. Okay. But just in terms, that's funny that you yeah. say that because then at this moment I'm thinking, do you think, and then the other, we haven't even gone there yet, but just up in this area, do you, it's okay if you don't agree with me, but do you agree that this silhouette that I feel like is flattering for me, what do you think? You look perfect. <laughs> See? Okay. So the thing is this, look, um, it is so much easier for me to work with a customer mm -hmm. when the customer can take what I'm offering. Sure. So uh, I'm I'm not saying only you look perfect only because we alter this pants. I know we're taking a little bit here around beautiful by the hip, everything. It's just because it just looks great on you. Mm -hmm. So it looks that right high in the it right. Suits, it fits me. Yes. It, yeah. Right high here in the, in the on top of the hip. Yeah. Not too much extra fabric underneath here. Yeah. Uh, the crutches yeah so, sure okay so not too low the right right so it's just perfect yes um i feel like i need to lower the camera to talk about the hem a bit so i'm going to do that hold on My that's on. okay so regardless and then the other thing that's that all as a lay person i know is the flare of a pant this pant could have this cut and this bottom could be very different and you are the one who decided and i hope yeah they can see i don't know if you can see I it i think but they can if i come in from here mm -hmm. it does look beautiful that top mm -hmm. it feels nice over here mm -hmm. right now we come in here by the thigh here mm -hmm. you have your thigh beautiful and from here easy easy come and open mm -hmm. so I like to ha, to keep a different type of looks. Mm -hmm. Not everything 100% fitted like this. Mm -hmm. I'm going to lower a little bit. Sure. Not everything fitted like this. Sure. I like to keep different styles as well. Right. Yeah, especially right. in warm. Because you yeah. always have us bring our shoes in. Yes. The shoes we're yes. planning on. Very under. important. I still, I'm, I'm looking at the camera just yeah. so that they can see my feet. I still would wear these with tennies too and just let them splash a little more casually you know just because it's mm -hmm. me but i want to put so you this is my favorite most basic what i look for on but and i've been talking to mario i'm mm -hmm. like i really want more of these these are very hard to find though like a trouser in a fabric you like in a fit you like is so hard to find and that's a and then B, which is so interesting about a trouser, is I currently have it on with a t-shirt, but I'm going to put the jacket on with it. And where the jacket hits the trouser and the shape of the trouser is another piece. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So, definitely. Yeah. Would you like to sure. try this one? And we didn't, um, we didn't do anything to this jacket. This is just off the, you know, rack, this jacket. And so hopefully it's... And you want me to button it, don't you? Yeah, yes. <laughs> okay. So yeah, even if you're not going to button it, give me the opportunity for me sure. to, to look at it. Okay. Like this. And first and foremost, you do whatever you want. But at my first opinion that I want to hear about is just that they designed it to hit the pants somewhere and go with the pants. So but the high of the helm of the jacket, if you look at it in the mirror or in the camera, mm -hmm. it looks beautiful. Mm -hmm. See, check out the, yeah. the length of the hem of the jacket. From, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, you and see? this is my natural weight. Yeah, and you look very tall, mm -hmm. very long legs. It looks mm -hmm. on you. Mm -hmm. Because if the jacket is coming down here, now right. your upper body is coming you know, too much. Right, and it's, and this will be our kind of baseline because the next suit will be an experiment in a di very different fit for me that's not the one I usually go toward. But I want to see if, and, I, and now I know from you, 
that if it were really important I to me, list, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> these are a little long. I know, like, like great. Just a slide. See, check out, if you look in the mirror, yeah, let it go. I mm -hmm. was, I was work with one so you can see. Mm -hmm. So keep it like this. Yeah. And right here. Yeah. Not too long, not right. too short. Right. Right there it would be just right. 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 Uh, yeah. Yeah. So anyways. <laughs> my my bad. <laughs> it's okay. Now I'm spoiled and I know this and I see, but it's okay. It's you know, it's it's a nice thing because we're not talking about, you know, plastic surgery. We're talking about mm. an alteration. So anyways, this suit is my baseline. I like it. And I, whatever. The, but we're talking pants. And so mm. the way it meets the pants, the overall effect is lengthening, you'd say? The the only thing I need to sure. do is the length of the sleeve. Right, right. Nothing else. The length of the jacket, I love it. Look mm -hmm. at that. Mm -hmm. It looks a little bit longer here, a little bit shorter here. Mm -hmm. Like the, like when you do the vest like that. Sure. It's just perfect. Now, if you want to see an angle, like a face in the wall. Do you want me to turn? Yes, that would be good. Mm -hmm. It just looks great here. Mm -hmm. See? It looks mm -hmm. great. The height is perfect for you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Same. Excellent. Well, perfect. Well, we'll try on the other one. Sounds good. Okay. So I put on another pair of pants I really like. You did nothing to the length, mm -hmm. but I bought them a full size larger in this area. The, and then they were way too big in my waist. Mm -hmm. And so you fix the waist, but it is that general idea of I liked the trousery fabric. I find that's the wool mm -hmm. and I find this fitting and this loose. And so, and you did that for me. So is, are you having a question for me well, or something just, you like it or something you don't like it? Or uh... I like it. And I'm just showing you, I guess do, I'm showing you mm -hmm. it's kind of the same thing, but a little higher. And in order to get it to fit, I had to buy the pants bigger. You've mm -hmm. already done the work to get them to fit me the way I wanted. Mm -hmm. So I, I tell this to people, okay? Don't always, like I said to you before, we have to find one specific garment. All of them low rise, all of them high rise, all of them snug, all of them loose, or every, mm -hmm. all the time skinny, mm -hmm. skinny jeans or skinny mm -hmm. fitted. We always like to keep a different fit, a different for different occasions. Right. And um, I like this one that is wool and it's a casual look too. Mm -hmm. So I, I love that. Yeah. I, I will say is why not? Yeah. And I chose to pair it with a boot. I don't, you know, whatever to, so that, you know, I didn't pair it with Goes a boot that did that, you know. Yeah. The, the hem meets the boot. Yes, I was just saying that it goes right to the top of the boot. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that's what I see with those um, nice and fitted here and a little wider here in the leg, open leg, yeah. open hem, whatever the thing is called. It goes to the top of the boot, yeah. not leaving too much space. Right, right. So that's my baseline. What you're about to see is a completely different silhouette. And we'll see what Sounds you think. Sounds good. All right. All right, I'm going to go where you are, though, because sure. they can see. Okay, so this pair of pants, let's see where can, okay. <clears throat> Here, do you want me to share with you what I noticed? Tell me what you I'll noticed. I'll tell you what I noticed. I noticed that the intersection of the hem and the shoe is terrible. And what I noticed, though, is if I just do this, it's so much better. And then here's another thing, and that it's a, it's a more men's wary casual silhouette that would be fun to wear with tennies. And then do you mind? And then obviously too big mm -hmm. here. And then do you mind passing me the jacket so I can just show Not you a all. funny thing? Sure. So, Cause I, I don't really like the pants by themselves, but I did think it was interesting because I thought the jacket Somehow when I put, like if I put it on with, and I had the pants at the right length, mm -hmm. it would be just such a smart, sporty, casual suit rather than a formal suit. That's what I thought. You tell me what you uh, think. So I'll if, take the jacket off. Sure. First. I will say is this. <laughs> Can we try with a different type of shoe? Oh, really? You want me to bring out my sneakers? No. I wanted something <laughs> different. Oh, okay. I want to just let's give it a try okay. to see if we see any difference okay. or not. 
Okay. So what I, what I was seeing is okay. the hem of the pants is coming very s small. Yeah. And, and those shoes are a little too bulky. Okay. Oh, interesting. Dep depends, depends on the garment. Okay. So I have here some shoes just to, I give the customers only to, um, to, just for me to, to do shorting hem or dresses and stuff sure, like that. Sure, sure, of course. Which is a, just a, a little bit different. Oh, I love that. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'm going to. Oh, interesting. So a strappy kitten heel sort of vibe. So, yes. And and I'm I'm glad we're doing this this video today about the the, the pens. Now we're gonna figure out if those are even those pens is gonna work with, with what type of shoe. Right. Okay. So I would want pointy toe, but whatever. That's fine. But now if you look at so I don't like this one too wide there. Sure. I would love those shoes to be a little more pointy like yeah, this one. Yeah, me too. I have pointy toes. Okay. It's not with me. Okay. So they so, can't, I'm going to hold up my foot a little bit. I'll try to okay. put a cut away. That's okay. Okay. So that's what I will have. That's already a, better. It's a different type of shoe. Now, if you, it's an, an angle a little bit, just like that. Like this? Like this. A little more if you don't mind so they can like, see. Oh, okay. So it will look a little bit different. Uh-huh. And I wonder, and I'll try to take a close up, but. That's as best we can do. Well, there you go. So there's like my 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 pants here. Yeah. I cannot be with bulky shoes. I'm short already. Uh huh. And 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 those those bulky shoes, I will look too much here. Right. My whole body disappear. Right. Here. Right. So this one, the only changes with this one is I will uh, have a little pointy shoes. Sure. Not open like that, but this like this type of shoe instead of that type of shoe. That type of shoe. With even with this, so just a pointy shoe and the length is fine? The, um, the, yeah, the length. I might shorten just a slight. That's um, so interesting. I might shorten probably half an inch in those okay. pants. So I'm going to tell you what I... There you go, like that. Like just, it's like mm -hmm. the wrist. It's the same thing as this wrist bone. Yes. This bone. And the thing is, is you want that bone to... Mm -hmm. On this kind of pant, what yeah. what do you want? You want to see it? Something like that, and that the shoe to be a little pointy shoe that would be perfect. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Because then it's a tension between something sort of, I would say, masculine and feminine, or something like that, or or skin like the sh more skin around the ankle, or what is so, the so what I'm seeing is this. Yeah. The whole entire body. Mm -hmm. see it oh, much. that's right. So I, I don't look at it just like in the video from the ankle only, only this part. Right. What I'm seeing is the whole entire thing. How tall you are. Yeah. How it looks with a jacket. With, okay. How is the cut of those pants to go with this type of the sh this type of shoe? Right. It's like a, if you have a nice form of pants, it's like a small waist, and you don't want to have the belt too thick. Right. Because here it will take over the whole entire body. Right. You want right. to have something small. Right. And then, and I, before I, well, I'll put it on because it's, it's, um, so in standard parlance, my shape is, this is the thickest part of me right mm -hmm. in here. Yeah. So I generally avoid any cigarette or fitted pants. And I don't have particularly like, bird like calves you know they're mm. so anyways i normally avoid these and i literally was thinking if um mario if it, if i had to always avoid them or if it was a matter of the shoes, shoes and fit it was the shoes right oh look at it, that it's, it's the shoes mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so the suit that looks good mm -hmm. if, if we look at it here too long but yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. we do this one here mm -hmm. and those pants just slide short mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is like short, like this. Mm -hmm. With those type of shoes, with a pointy shoe at right. the front, no, you you will look great. Okay, and so, do this may seem like a dumb question, but you know we all have lots of different shoes. Could we alter these in these shoes? And the a belief would be that any that it wouldn't matter if my heel was a little higher or lower because it's where it's fitting on my leg. It will not matter if it's much higher or lower. Mm -hmm. It will matter if you have this type of shoe, like a thick boot style. Right. right. Interesting. And I've never, I've never knew, knew that. And then it's, 
this whole look is a little more, again, you're not thinking about in these terms, but I am for whatever reason. For me, it seems more masculine, like kind of like a tuxedo, slim little long lapel-ish thing. I know. Not necessary. Okay. Not necessary. Okay. So if I do alterations, this one, I will do some small little change. Mm -hmm. I would suggest a different shoe, mm -hmm. for 100 percent sure, short in the sleeves. Yeah, they're way too long. And I will give just a slight yeah, little, a little shape, shape the oh, jacket shape first. The jacket. I will shape the jacket just a little bit to make it look more feminine. Uh -huh. Just a little bit, not okay. not to fit it, but just a little bit of changes. All right, I'm gonna put on tennies. I just want to see what you sure. think. Sure. Yes. Just, please do. Okay. Okay. So what I've seen, like when I'm in New York, yeah. I've seen all sorts of men wearing suit, you know, and they would wear a suit like this and they'd have tennies and they look so cute because the leg is sort of fitted and blah, blah, blah. But you're what? So tell me. And so all I thought was, oh, I could do that if I had that much ankle show. But you still think these are too heavy or what do you think? So. <laughs> <laughs> you, you love that question yeah so i call that one trend okay temporary work just okay. just from here to here sure um i seen those i seen those really bulky shoes like a this thick mm -hmm. of the sole yeah and they yeah these are pretty yes. bulky so i i seen with with the beautiful dresses formal dresses but they like these shoes or those boots if you're asking that tailor does go with, no, it does not go with. <laughs> but it is it is strange that the people love that. Yeah. I cannot say no, you should not do that either because that is something what people right now love wearing it. Sure. Uh do I think it's gonna last long? I don't believe that. I, I see. don't believe that. I see. So let's see that suit, it goes really good with tennis shoes. It's like uh I will ask the question that people who does sports, everybody knows football here in the United States. Right. Now, pretend that you say shoes is a shoe, but I say, let's, let's put you, let's not work the shoes today with cleats. Let's give you high heel to do sports. Mm -hmm. It's just not going to go well. Sure. But it's going to be a trend. It's going to be just for the moment. I see. That is how I believe. I'm very strong. Mm -hmm. And, and, and the clothing industry. Yeah. I know right now, even in the TV, you can see that wearing a suit with the sneakers. In my opinion, it just doesn't go. Mm -hmm. But what companies do is to do the trend, is to do, okay, we're gonna push doing this changing and make a sale this amount. Sure. We're gonna throw that one. Um, that is how it is. Sure. Yeah. So the for you, what you mentioned was a light shoe, a pointy shoe, and that is speaking to the pant. Is there something about these pants that is it the narrowness of the leg that asks for the light shoe yes. and the pointy shoe? Mm -hmm. And the wider leg is willing, is easy for it to carry the... You can do both. Yeah, yes. I see. With the wider, you can do both. Because what I'm trying to do, if we got that, that skinny pants here, yeah. with, with very bulky shoes, the whole entire body disappear and the eyes goes only into the shoe. I see. Mm -hmm. It's like a, you have somebody wearing a white shirt. It has a big spot here yeah. in the shirt. Yeah. Everything disappear, your eyes goes directly to the spot. Sure. It's the same the shoes too. Sure. And I will say, and just you tell me what you think. I the and yeah, and now I don't even want to be in these shoes. And now <laughs> I find, I, for, for instance, I just have to say, I also feel really uncomfortable now in mm -hmm. a suit that doesn't fit right. Like, I can't handle this anymore. Like, this, all of this bulk down here. You just need alterations. Yes. Yeah. Small but, alterations. So I'm going to do yeah. this for right now while we talk. And just say another revelation, though, for me in terms of pa these, were, these pants were a little mm, lower than the last pants. And, and it could be that I don't even like the carriage as well. It could be that. And I was just surprised when I put the long jacket, the, the long jacket and the slim leg looked good together. And I it sold the pant to me. The pant by itself 
didn't, but when I put the jacket on, I was happy with it. Did you see that too? Actually, yes, because it's like a suit jacket, the suit pants. Mm -hmm. It goes together, mm -hmm. like a one knee from each other. Mm -hmm. So that is what I'm talking right. about. Because for, for me personally, do you, it just kind of wastes a few a inches too, yeah. of my natural and now it push and accumulate this extra fabric yeah there. right like in whatever you need to lift it up just a little from this side here from here this way uh, and uh -huh. from here the other way but they don't they're not too tight they just fit yeah firmer or whatever yeah. the word is because i i here's what i'm telling you is i always avoid fitted pants but you're saying give them a go with lighter shoes. Yes, that's what I just said. Yeah. Okay, excellent. Sometimes you have to combine one complement to other. Mm -hmm. Because let's, let's be honest, not everybody has the money to buy a nice suit and just throw away because that's doesn't fit mm -hmm. or because in our minds think you know. Mm -hmm. So we need something to complement the other to make things right. Yes. That's all what we need. Okay, and people always ask, these were the shoes that I hunted high and low for to find, and I found them right at home at Twigs um, that I thought would make the pants work, and I think they did a great job. So these are just some slip-ons uh, from Shop Twigs. Same with the blouse. I think it's just such a good basic. I wear it all the time. This champagne silk blouse also from Shop Twigs. Okay, thanks. Okay, so I put on a pair of corduroys mm -hmm. again in my favorite silhouette. And I'm going to come closer so you can see something. And Mario and I were talking about, you know, I can wear them with the kind of boots I wear. I mean, I live in Wisconsin. Frankly, these are the easiest kind of shoes to wear <laughs> that are chunky because you're further away from the salt and mush and you know what I mean. Yes, but like uh, we, we just spoke before having the wider pants yeah you can easily go with both shoes yeah easily easily yeah. go with both shoes yes and then i said that though i don't wear these as often and i and i say why <laughs> and and i said because of these buttons be, you know they just draw too much attention to themselves and they make this line here and why do i don't really need a line right there so now if we look at it in the cameras, like yeah. from far away. Yeah, you can't. So because you have the color of a shirt, mm -hmm. it does not affect much as well. Now, when you have, if you have a, a black blouse. Yeah, yeah. Put the black top. Oh, this is not good. Yeah, right, exactly. This is, this is not good. No, exactly. No, it will be not good. It would be a little too much. Like paying attention in the wrong spot. It yeah. That would be my opinion. Exactly. So I'm going to change the camera and show you something. Alrighty, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so this is a sweater that I knit. So you're seeing head to toe, but one of the things about this sweater, I don't know if you ever think about these, <laughs> but it has fullish sleeves and it very intentionally gathers here and has a little blouse over it. But I could have controlled every little thing about it, you know, because I'm making it and I am knitting it again. And one of the things in a different color and everything. Mm. But one of the things I was thinking about as I knitted again is, for me, I thought it was too middle. Like, the, it wasn't oversized, it wasn't cropped. It's just sort of like right in the middle and adding, I don't know. And so I thought I would perhaps make the rib deeper and let that little come up over flop thing happen higher and then go into a rib here right at the smallest part of my body that's my plan for altering this also and i'm just checking with you and mm -hmm. i'm curious 
I feel like I have to wear this with wider trousers. You know, I wore it with the first trousers that I showed you, the, the mm -hmm. whole suit. Um, and this is the thing about knitwear, which obviously you're not a knitter, but we knit things and then we wonder what we wear them with. So this is your first crack at, you're seeing a sweater. And obviously I, at this point I'm not, this is the sweater I have, mm -hmm. I'm knitting a second one. But looking at this silhouette, even though I, the camera isn't head to toe, what suggestions would you have to wear with it as it is? And what do you think of my plans to alter the second one? So it will be very hard for me to have an honest opinion, hmm. because especially when it's knit. If I have, mm -hmm. okay, now listen careful here. If I have more sweaters like you have right now mm -hmm. here with my eyes so you can put it on here mm -hmm. and there and mm -hmm. here and there i'll be 100 percent be able to choose oh but just one sweater i totally yeah, understand with that one single sweater when i don't do i do not do sweater right i'll be lying to say okay right. we're gonna do this i and love this. that yeah so i would love to see more yeah when a little shorter when a little tighter right so this one it will help me to analyze right because everything what i do i visualize i look yes. at it mm -hmm. i feel i mm -hmm. touch i want to feel the fabric i want to feel all the kind of stuff but with one single one it will be hard for me to tell you oh no you have just episode you know number I four jumped. or five <laughs> because really we all we knitters i mean I know it's not your thing, but it yeah. would be amazing just to help us mm -hmm. because just to even like hone a silhouette that's flattering, it's not, and, and speak to this, it's like there's not a fixed flattering silhouette for mm -hmm. a body. There's a silhouette that goes with other garments on a body, which is yes. what you understand, yep. right? Mm -hmm. But yet still, if I'm going to spend the money on the yarn and the time knitting it, it would be good for me to have at least an idea of, you know, I, I would love to see your assessment of what I've done so far, which ones work better. So we are in this industry. You do knit, I do sew. If I'm making clothing, routine, why custom made is so expensive? Because sometimes a lot of the garments you make it doesn't work eventually you make the prototype it will work for so sure for you it's going to be the same you say as you you would love to know so you don't waste time doing something not good and for, unfortunately that's mm -hmm. the ugly truth we right. have to do it right we have to do it and we have to waste time doing it to must to make the masterpiece right right and to build the insight yes. you build the insight from the ground up yeah you, nobody gives it to you so it's like it's like you make three sweaters yeah to make one. Oh my gosh this so is what go, this whole episode's worth yes. for the knitters so yeah. you make it this one mm -hmm. bigger mm -hmm. the other one make it smaller mm -hmm. and the other one something between those changes now you're gonna you're gonna figure out which one goes with what <clears throat> Now you're gonna make that masterpiece. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, that's how when you are making one one garment is. It's for us, it's the same when we do the sewing. Yeah, I see. All right, so could you just repeat what you were just saying to me about making a sweater more than once, or and having patience with yourself? And my answer was, unfortunately, <laughs> <laughs> when we make clothing or we're trying to do a, a prototype about this garment, you have to have the patience to do this. It's going to happen that you want to make three or four. There's not going to work to make it one right mm -hmm. because we're going to find out which one is better for myself. This high or a little lower, a little narrow, a little tighter here by the waist and little have some extra fabric here to fold over, stuff like that. We got to do three or four to make it one. It requires mm -hmm. extremely amount of patience, mm -hmm. extremely amount of patience. Mm -hmm. That's how it goes. Yeah. yeah, that's amazing. And do you think, I mean, that's a lot to settle into even my brain, but I do, I admit, I have had two, sweat, two particular designs that I've done over and over and over, and I've seen that in my own knitting life. The pressure in knitting is mm -hmm. to have novelty and have a new thing and a new thing and a new design. So 
it, it is against the grain of that. But I would say that was one of the things I was struck too when I went and started watching tailoring videos is a man might get one suit a year and build his wardrobe slowly over time. And, um, I want to say something that I think, in my opinion, mm -hmm. that will help you a lot. Okay. Is that when, when you make a pattern and you sell the pattern and you charge the money, don't feel afraid to put the right price. And people need to learn they have to pay for what you do because they don't know it's you had to make three, four, five, six times. Mm -hmm. Not charge money just to make one pattern to right. figure out. A lot of people, they have no idea what time is involved. And if you put all those numbers uh, together, so you will have the right price to pull these people because it, the amount of work is, is unbelievable. I understand that. Well, I think in knitting land, what will happen is somebody will purchase a pattern for 7 to $10 and they'll want to knit the pattern exactly to pattern, that's what we call it, without trying it on, without thinking about their body. They don't want to slow down and they get frustrated when it doesn't work. And what I'm trying to teach like, is how to slow down and slow down. Like, and, I, and that just takes me all the way back to your first class and how you messed up the sleeve mm -hmm. and then you went back and all night long corrected it. You had that drive to correct it and that drive to fix errors is really, speak to that about you and your making and your career path. I will say, Jackie, I will say that is why this type of jobs, like you do the knitting, I do the sewing, it's not meant for everybody. You you have to have this in your heart to to understand this is not good and I'm gonna make it right to make it look beautiful. We, we luckily we have this gift to do this type of work. I saw this art piece recently that I just loved. On the wall was the word poem. Mm -hmm. Just the letters were hung on the wall, and there was, but what letters that had fallen off were you know the R, the L, and the B. Problem. Those, you know, those mm -hmm. little letters fell off, and what was left behind was poem. Yeah, this is, it's just it's just it's just good. So every, everything like that is good. Like we, when you were uh, talking about about the sweater, if this one fit me well or not, it reminds me of a story that I did um, a wedding dress a basso. I did this wedding dress basso. She was very tall. She was six two and very long dress, silk dress, and I I make that basso. She came to pick it up, she put it on, I, I put it on, and she loved that. I didn't say anything at the moment, but I was thinking all night long, and I called her the next day. I said, I need to set up another appointment. I do not like this bustle. So she, she came back, and I was thinking all night long how to do it. I did. I redid the bustle, and it was very lovely. And she gave me a review on, on Google and saying that after she posted the pictures of herself with a dress, flowing the floor like this and with mm -hmm. a bustle and so everybody was contacting her who mm. altered the dress it was a very sweet story what i what i take pride of this is she gave the video and pictures when i was showing her how to bustle they give to the other tailors but they couldn't figure out how to do it. but if you think about it um i did not make money i lost a lot of money during the bus because i put all that time to the i did and I have to set up another appointment to do it again. Creative integrity. I have to, I have to, have to redo because for me, like I said, as soon as you get out from my shop to do, to take pictures, that is, that is my advertisement. Mm. People say, okay, who did this work? And that's what, so mm -hmm. the same I was telling you with yeah. the sweater. Sometimes you end up losing money mm -hmm. to make things right. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, and that's the thing, valuing the work itself. It's, yes. And the product will, the product will reflect that, but it's mm -hmm. the work. Yeah. Right, and, and taking pride in that. I love that. Well, thank you so much again for spending time with us. And, um, you know, I just know that the, the knitting community has loved meeting you. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Jackie, uh, from Mario here at Moneri Tailoring, from the whole staff at Moneri Tailoring. They're very happy that what we're doing together. And um, hopefully we have bring more people to here and, and to, oh, or if they have questions, I'll yeah. be happy to answer. Perfect. And yeah, that I love that. Well, thank you. Thank you, Jackie. Okay, thank, thank you, you for tuning in.